working in the spirit of the Golden Empire. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon to you. I'm Alex Fisher. We begin with articles of impeachment on the Senate floor. The stage is set for the third impeachment trial of a president in U.S. history. Just moments ago, all U.S. senators were sworn in. The trial is now set to resume Tuesday morning. And now an explosive NBC interview threatens to shake up the proceedings. NBC's Susan McGinnis has more. Today, the two articles of impeachment against President Trump now in the hands of the Senate. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts presiding over the trial. His first act, swearing in 100 senators who will sit as jurors. The president formally accused of coercing foreign interference in the 2020 election for his own benefit and obstructing Congress from investigating his actions. President Trump engaged in this scheme or course of conduct for corrupt purposes in pursuit of personal political benefit. Republicans now in charge of the process calling it a partisan sham. They want the Senate to redo their homework and rerun the investigation. Today, the nonpartisan Government Accountability Office ruled the White House violated the law when it withheld congressionally approved security aid for Ukraine. This reinforces again the need for documents and eyewitnesses in the Senate. Now, a new interview raising the stakes as a central player in the Ukraine scandal breaks his silence in an interview with MSNBC's Rachel Maddow. I want to get the truth out. Lev Parnas, an indicted associate of President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, directly implicating President Trump in the scheme to strong-arm Ukraine's president into announcing investigations of the Bidens, allegations at the center of the impeachment trial. President Trump knew exactly what was going on. Uh, he was aware of all of my movements. President Trump maintaining his innocence. They have a hoax going on over there. Let's take care of it. Judge and jury taking their places for only the third time in history, sitting in judgment of an American president. Parnas says he is willing to testify, but it is yet to be decided if any witnesses will be heard. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. Bakersfield Congressman and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy responded to a photo of him with Lev Parnas, the Rudy Giuliani associate, indicted for alleged campaign finance violations. This is the photo. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi went after the congressman yesterday for the photograph. McCarthy responded this morning during a news conference. Here's what he had to say. I do not know the man. He came to a fundraiser and he provided me money. I learned from the media that he provided money to a fund. A learning of that information we gave that to charity. I think that'll answer the same question. If you come back next week, you'll get the same answer. That donation was $111,000 to a main Republican fundraising committee. And like McCarthy said, the money had been donated to charity. The Leslie Chance murder trial continued this morning. The former principal was charged in the murder of her husband, Todd, back in 2013. Days after he was shot and killed, his body was found in an almond orchard. 17's Vanessa Dillon joins us live in downtown Bakersfield with details on the latest on this trial. Good afternoon, Vanessa. Good afternoon, Alex. Well, today's trial continued after days of Leslie Chance taking the stand and telling her side of the story and testimony. And the prosecution today recalled rebuttal witnesses, but the defense also recalled Leslie Chance back onto the stand asking her to retrace her steps the morning that her husband was found killed back in 2013. Now, Lidget asked Chance about driving shortcuts the family would take, as well as her first attorney, Kyle Humphrey. Prosecutor Art Norris called Melissa Castamagna back to the stand, who worked for the coroner's office in 2013. She also went to the Chance's house with detectives the day Todd's body was found. The prosecution also called William Glapinski to the stand. He's Todd's cousin and also a key witness testifying against Chance. But after a brief sidebar, the prosecution excused Klepinski, saying his testimony earlier in the trial would suffice as evidence. The next witness called this morning was David Cotter. He worked for the truck company Todd was employed with in 2013. Cotter said he was one of his employees testifying. He found out about Todd's death on August 26th, the day after Todd was killed. 
He said he called Leslie as soon as he found out, expressing how sorry he was to hear about her loss. Adding her response to his condolences was to ask about returning Todd's company belongings. He testified he had a she had a business like tone, and that conversation was had just 24 hours after Leslie received the news that her husband was found killed the morning of August 25th, 2013. Now Tiffany Salazar was also called to the stand this morning. She was the chances neighbor back in. 2013. The trial is expected to resume later this afternoon at 1.30. Join us for 17 News at 6. We'll have the very latest on this murder trial. Reporting live outside the courthouse, I'm Vanessa Dillon, 17 News. Vanessa, thank you. We have some breaking news to bring you uh, that we're just getting into our newsroom. The district attorney's office has just announced it has reached a resolution regarding the case of Leticia Perez. Perez must donate $30,000 to local charities, pay $4,000 to the Fair Political Practices Commission, do 100 hours of community service, and complete an ethics class. The $30,000 represents the amount of money allegedly received by her husband, which created the conflict of interest of which she was accused. If she completes all the terms of the bargain within a year, the district attorney will dismiss all charges against her and it will not go on her criminal record. More details coming up tonight on 17 News at 5. All right, now we're going to take a look at your forecast because we've got a storm making its way down California. But right now here in Kern County, things are looking pretty dry. Yeah, you take a look outside and you're like, what storm? Uh, we did see some clouds earlier this morning, uh, but now we've been able to clear things out. We've got clouds uh, well off to the west, as you can see here, starting to approach. And that will continue to increase as we go throughout the afternoon. 56 in Bakersfield right now. The light wind out of the north-northwest at 9. And as we look at the afternoon by 3 o'clock, we'll be mostly cloudy. We'll We'll start to see the encroachment of some showers to the west side. And then uh, throughout the evening, I do expect some rain. We'll be back into the 40s by 9. And then for the mountains, uh, we'll be uh, right near 47 by 3 o'clock, uh, increasing chance of rain by that time. And that will continue throughout the evening. By 9 o'clock, we'll be watching the snow levels carefully. They could drop to 4,100 feet. That would put it near pass level. I'll have much more coming up in a few minutes. All right, Kev, thanks so much. New details on a gruesome murder we first told you about near Tehachapi last week. Yesterday, the coroner says 55-year-old Guadalupe Adams died after being shot multiple, multiple times in the head. Her body was found last week inside a home in Golden Hills. The main suspect in her death was her own son, Madison Adams. Law enforcement found Madison parked off Interstate 15 in Nevada, just south of the state border. After a standoff with police, Madison died during an officer-involved shooting. We're still waiting for details of what happened, and there's still no word on a motive. An 11-year-old boy is accused of making threats against his middle school. Yesterday, a concerned parent responded to a post on, or reported a post on social media, showing a photo of the boy posing with what looked like a gun. The photo was captioned with the message, quote, that he was going to shoot up Jacobson Middle School. Tatsby police arrested the boy and recovered a BB gun pistol that appeared in the social media post. Officers say it looked like a real gun because it did not have the bright orange tip on the barrel. One of several men accused of trying to help a suspected cop killer escape to Mexico has been sentenced. Eric Quiros Razo will spend more than a year and a half in prison for trying to help Paulo Mendoza get out of California. Mendoza is the man accused of murdering Newman Police Corporal Ronald Singh back in 2018. You may remember, Corporal Singh was shot the day after Christmas during a traffic stop. The Kern County Sheriff's Office arrested Mendoza and other accomplices in Lamont. Mendoza's brother, who was also convicted for helping him escape, faces up to five years in prison. A sentencing date has not been set. First responders salute an L.A. Sheriff's deputy killed while helping a woman in Los Angeles. Law enforcement officers escorting the remains of Detective Amber Leist from the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office yesterday. Leist died on Sunday, hit by a car after helping an elderly woman who had fallen in an intersection. The 12-year-old vet or the 12-year veteran of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, Leist, was off duty. But the sheriff says her death will be treated as an on-duty occurrence. The driver who hit Lee stayed at the scene. It is not known if any charges will be filed. BPD is asking for feedback on their recent crackdown on street racing. The department will hold a forum on social media later today. You can tune in on the department's Facebook or Instagram pages tonight at 6. The department says it is also considering an in-person forum at Independence High School on Tuesday. 
In the last few weeks, BPD has impounded several vehicles and issued dozens of citations in response to the growing anger against street racers. The McFarland City Council is having a special meeting later today to lay out plans to get out of its financial crisis. McFarland is struggling to retain employees, which is causing a safety risk. An example of this is the police department. The department should have 12 officers, but right now it only has five. One plan would be to add bonuses to keep employees in McFarland. There's a lot more on the agenda. The meeting starts at 6 and the City Council at the City Council Chambers on West Sherwood Avenue. And we will have more coming up tonight on 17 News at 5. A civil engineer with the city of Tehachapi is now a finalist for a nationwide award. Jay Schlosser was recently honored as Civil Engineer of the Year in the public sector. The state award is given by the American Society of Civil Engineers. Tehachapi officials say Schlosser has been instrumental in the transformation of the city of Tehachapi downtown over the decade. He is now one of 10 finalists for the National Engineer of the Year Award. Well, still ahead, demanding answers. What parents and federal investigators are wanting to know after that plane dumped fuel over a school in Los Angeles. What was revealed about what the pilots did not do before the drop? Welcome back. Things are clear right now, but it's about to change outside, right, Kev? Yeah, Alex is going to stand by. I've been dealing with the cold. See if I can get through this weather forecast first off here. It's been a struggle. Uh, taking you outside, it's just a beautiful start to the afternoon. This is looking off to the east right now. Uh, the clouds will increase as we progress here into the afternoon with rain arriving this evening. Sunny skies and 55 out in Wasco right now. And Arvin, mostly sunny and 54. And then for Fraser Park, clear skies currently 50 degrees. Nice and comfortable there. And then Golden Hills, uh, you're at 55. Here's a look at uh, Bakersfield right now, 56. And we've got a light wind out of the north northwest at 9 miles per hour. Overnight so far, uh, we were at 35, so slightly below the normal of 39. 56 is the normal high today, and 82. The record set back in 1923. Right now, we take a look at the valley temperatures running into the 50s. In fact, the mountains very nice. Uh, 57 in Tatchby, 60 Lake Isabella, and we've got 52 out of Ridgecrest. Here's a look at the latest satellite and radar and nothing to show you. Uh, all the action is still north and west of us. One thing we are starting to see the winds pick up a little bit and uh, you can see the strongest of the winds uh, to the south over the grapevine at this time. And I-5, Fraser Mountain Road, uh, traffic is moving smoothly under the clear skies. So very little cloud cover. But by uh, late tonight, early tomorrow morning, we could be looking at some snow in this picture that you're seeing right now. Where is that storm? Well, it is up to the north. The area of low pressure into British Columbia, the cold front now starting to swing through California. Cold air behind the front, warm air ahead. We'll start to see the winds pick up around Kern County as well this afternoon. Then the rain will arrive and snow levels on the backside of this will drop uh, near 4,000 feet. And that's why we're expecting possibly some snow uh, by tonight into our Friday morning. Here's a look at our future cast model, put it into motion. And you can see as we go throughout uh, the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, we really increase the clouds. And we're having a little bit of problem with the model issue in terms of the rain. But I I can assure you it is on the way. And that's why we have some watches and warnings to talk about as well. Uh, winter storm warning in effect, uh, 10 a.m. this morning, and then it'll last until tomorrow morning. So the moisture hasn't arrived yet, but when it does, snow level between 4,000 and 6,000 feet. We're looking at 4 to 8 inches, 8 to 12 inches at 5,000 and 6,000 feet. So really the areas of concern up that way will be all to Sierra, where you're going to get a lot of snow, and that'll be great fresh powder. And then we have a wind advisory for the mountains and the desert, and then a winter weather advisory uh, from 4 o'clock this afternoon through 4 a.m. on Friday, 1 to 3 inches above 4,000 feet. So if that is the case and we see those snow levels drop, we'll be uh, looking at affected passes tomorrow morning with some snowfall. Here's a look at the predictions on the rain between a tenth and a quarter of an inch for the valley and for the mountains between a quarter and a half. And then you can see the snow mounts that we may see as we see this kind of switch over late tonight into tomorrow. Air quality will be moderate today with an AQI at 66 and for the remainder of the day, increasing chance of showers 
by late afternoon. A southwest wind 10 to 20, 59 in Bakersfield, 61 in Delano, 58 in Taft tonight in the 30s and 40s. And then for the mountains in the Kern River Valley, we'll be looking at an increasing chance of showers here as well. 50 in Fraser Park, 58 in Tehachapi, and near 60 into the Kern River Valley. And also the winds picking up a little bit more in the afternoon as well. And then for the desert, chance of increasing rain, 56 in Mojave. And then once this exits tomorrow afternoon, we should see a little more sunshine. And then uh, clouds will reappear for the weekend with some fog. And then for the mountains, also uh, see some clearing on Friday. And then uh, more clouds for the weekend, temperatures in the 40s and 50s. And then for the Kern River Valley uh, tomorrow, some morning showers and then improvements by the afternoon. All right, so we'll have Alyssa Carlson in tonight. Take She'll a have the very forecast. latest tonight, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow morning for all the commuters. Yeah, all right, thanks so much, Kev. Well, a pilot's decision to dump fuel over schools and neighborhoods in Los Angeles earlier this week during a flight emergency is getting even more scrutiny. Parents and the FAA now demanding even more answers after it was revealed the crew never warned air traffic controllers. NBC's Miguel Almaguer has more. During the radio call between the crew aboard Delta Airlines Flight 89 and air traffic controllers, the FAA says pilots never said they needed to dump fuel before deciding to release streams of it over L.A. schools and neighborhoods. Okay, so you don't need to hold the dump fuel or anything like that? Uh, negative. Though the crew declared an emergency, had the tower known the jumbo jet was going to drop fuel, the FAA says the 777 would have been directed to an appropriate fuel dumping area like over the ocean, adding the flight crew is responsible for determining what is necessary to safely land an aircraft when there is an emergency. I was basically dumbfounded, uh, I, you know, to dump fuel at such low altitude. That can be good, right? With this shocking dump under investigation, the FAA notes fuel evaporates when dropped at higher altitudes. But Tuesday's drop came at less than 3,000 feet, falling on some 60 people, many of them children. It was one of the kids on the playground. His, his, his clothes was all inside the bags because it smells like gas. While some of those hit by the jet fuel complained of skin irritation, no one was seriously hurt. Delta says they dispatched 13 cleaning crews to help decontaminate outside surfaces so it would be safe for students to return. Obviously, they need to talk to whoever, uh, I guess, coordinated that dump or approved it. This morning, that is exactly what the FAA is doing, hoping to get to the bottom of why this happened above. All right, we'll be back after this. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back and taking a live look at Wall Street right now. The Dow Jones is up 213 points. NASDAQ is down 25 and the S&P 500 is down 10. All right, let's take a look at oil prices. West Texas Intermediate is at $58.62 a barrel, and Midway Sunset is at $61.56 a barrel. Filling out an application for financial aid can be pretty stressful and pretty confusing. That's why Bakersfield College is trying to help students with that process. The college will host a series of financial aid events next month. Students can go to the event to help, uh, to get help filling out their applications. Financial aid experts will also be on hand to work with students. The first event is on February 11th on the Southwest Campus. It runs from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And we'll put information about those dates and the times for the rest of the workshops on our website, kget.com. All right, more news coming up after the break. Welcome back. When it comes to jotting down ideas, we want the quickest, easiest option. And these days that means turning to well, technology, as PC Mike Winlin reports, using a fancy note-taking app can help make sure your valuable thoughts don't disappear. Notability lets you combine multiple inputs, including typing, sketching, handwriting, and photos in a single place. It also supports annotating PDF files. Notes can be shared via email and cloud-based services, including AirDrop, Google Drive, and Dropbox. Eight ninety-nine for iOS. 
Good Notes 5 turns an iPad into digital paper. Take handwritten notes in digital notebooks, on imported PDF files, PowerPoint, Word documents, or on images and photos. All the notes are searchable, and you'll never have to worry about losing or misplacing them again. It's seven ninety nine for iOS. And Notion blends notes and tasks and lets you easily drag, drop, and edit notes, making prioritizing lists and to-dos. It can easily synchronize content between different operating systems, and you can download the document for offline editing if there's no internet connectivity. Multiple users can even collaborate and share documents in the same time. It's free for iOS and Android. Are you thinking there may be a place on your smartphone for one of those apps, but you'd like to check it out a little bit more? Not a problem. Just go over to my PC Mike Tech blog. There's my address on your screen. I built in a direct link to everything you just saw. Till next time, I'm PC Mike Wendland for NBC News. GetBus is offering a deal for new riders. Right now, passes are half off. New riders pay $22.50 for a 31-day pass. Get considered anyone who has been riding Get for less than six months to be a new rider. The half-off deal is sold on a first-come, first-served basis. You can apply in person at the Get Administration Office. You can find them at 1830 Golden State Avenue. All right, we're going to take a look at your forecast right after this. All right, welcome back, and we're taking a look at your forecast one final time before we go because we've got that rain that's kind of just knocking on our door. Yeah, you thought it was going to arrive this morning with the cloud cover, then we saw some clearing that we're seeing now. And as we take a look at the satellite and radar, you'll see the rain is now pushing through the Bay Area just to the north. So slow progression here as we go throughout the afternoon. I do expect it again this morning. We talked about between 3 and 4 would probably start to see some of that rain approaching the Kern County area. Then it will spread through overnight. Now, if this slows down a little bit more as we go throughout the evening hours, we we uh, may see a little bit more of that colder air push on in. So uh, tonight could be very tricky into the Kern County Mountain locations as snow levels are going to be right near 4,000 feet. What does that mean? Well, tomorrow morning we could wake up with uh, some affected roadways. So uh, again, Alyssa Carlson will be tracking this tonight on its progression. And then tomorrow morning on sunrise, uh, tune in and we'll have the very latest on uh, where the snow is falling and where the rain is falling as well around the area. Now, once this moves out, we'll see probably some clearing tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so that's kind of the situation right now. It is on the way. Don't worry. It's just uh, kind of meandering uh, more northerly at this time. It hasn't even reached Fresno. So uh, as you can see, beautiful start to the afternoon uh, here in Kern County. But that will all change later on tonight. And that radar looked like it was really raining in the Bay Area. Yeah, heavy. Well, you know, as it makes its way into Kern County tonight, we'll probably see some uh, heavier bands of rain push through as well. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. I know yeah. that you'll be uh, tracking it tomorrow morning on yeah. 17 News at Sunrise. Thanks so much for joining us for 17 News at Noon. We'll see you back here tonight for 17 News at 5. Enjoy the rest of your day. 17 News, your local news leader, continues 24 hours a day on KGET.com and our 17 News app in the spirit of the Golden Empire. 17 News.